Hello racers, <clears throat> welcome to the Gran Turismo 7 world. Uh, it is time to continue with the cafe menu books. So with uh, without other ado, let's go to menu book number 27, Collection Chevrolet. I think the last one I did is the, was the fourth, so time, time to move to another big American mark. Corvette, Corvette C4, C7 and C3, which I already have. Uh, that still means I will we'll drive the race where the C7 is to win, just because uh, I want to complete it, right? So let's find more, more about this book. Look again, this time around, you will be collecting Chevrolets. You may associate the brand with SUVs. That's a quite strange uh, thing to say. I actually... When it comes to Chevrolet, I always associate it with Corvette and Camaro, nothing else really. But Chevrolet also produces sports cars such as the Corvette and the Camaro. Exactly. These three cars are all examples of Chevrolet's famously stylish design. Collect them, then come back and see me. We already did the Camaro. There was a separate book for the Camaro, so that's why it's all Corvettes this time, I guess. Uh, I have three roulettes there. I'll leave them for later. Uh, for now, let's go. Let's go racing. Okay, it will be all Americas. That's kind of expected. So two of them are. It's American Club Cup 700. So those uh, performance points are rising pretty quickly. Uh, special stage route X. Okay. It's pretty, pretty boring. Uh, Daytona International Speedway. That's really, really nice. And we also have this uh, WeatherTech race with Laguna Seca, uh, American Clubman Cup 700. It doesn't it does not light up with the uh, with the yellow radar uh, mark because that's where the C3 is to be uh, to be win, and now they have it right. So let's start with this one. Now that gives me the beautiful C7, such an amazing car. Uh, I don't think there is C8 in this game, but let's uh, let's see if I have a car which I could use here. Um, I could definitely use the Camaro, and for such a quick, uh, such a quick truck, I think that would be a good choice. That car is really fast. I could also use the Ford, I guess. That would require a bit more tuning and probably would come up as a more expensive option. Uh, I prefer the Camaro, but I need to tune it. I don't think it's a 700 uh, performance point uh, series and that car is 620. So let's go quickly to a tuner. And let's put a little bit more uh, oomph into that car. I don't think I'll be buying anything extremes. I'm just going to have a quick look. Brakes is the last thing we need on the racetrack. Uh, I think racing tires, intermediate heavyweight won't be needed. Ah, a wrong button. Apologize. Apologize for that. Uh, let's go here. Um, surprisingly, I don't have much in terms of uh, upgrades in that car. That actually reduces me, my PP. I want to rise them. Uh, yeah, like brake balance, I won't need it. Suspension is very expensive. That is something I can invest into. That doesn't rise the PP too much, but still. <clears throat> yeah, let's let's get some good brakes into this car. Uh, I said I won't need them, but let's get them. All about acceleration in this truck. Uh, racing exhaust manifold. Yeah, let's get it. That's slowly getting us closer to that 700. Uh, it's a long way though, a very long way. It's still 700, I'm still 700 short. I want to avoid the very expensive uh, options, like this is 10,000 for, for just three points. I don't think it's worth it. Um, weight reduction, that's always a good option. So let's let's get that. Uh, again, a wrong button.
Yeah, uh, I think weight, weight reduction is one of the best upgrades to be applied to a car. I could even go level four. Um, you know, the lighter the car, I just dropped like 300 kilograms out of this car. How much is the last uh, last option? Where is it? Is it here? 25,000. Yeah, I won't be spending that. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, let's see what else we can get. We are we are at 654. Um, <clears throat> I think a little bit better, yeah. Suspension, I don't have any at the moment. What other options I have for suspension? Interestingly enough, the best option? Sports, there's no like racing suspension. Or, ah, uh, here it is, 20,000. Yeah, no. Go with this one. Call me cheap, but I don't think I need the super expensive stuff in the car. Um, okay, I won't be cheap here. I'll get that racing silencer. 662. I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. Seven. Eight goes up so slowly. Uh, one way LSD versus two way LSD. I think this one, if I remember correctly, is more for a... Uh... Does it want to turn? Why would I need something like that? Okay. That's pointless. Okay, so that's for drifting, they think. And this one? Okay, makes sense. Actually, I want that. So, what else do we have here to be bought? Uh, I think the transmission that car is good as it is at the moment. All I do is at Daytona and I reach quite a high speed with it. What tires do I have for that car? <coughs> I have sports medium. That's fine. I should be okay. Uh, that's that would decrease the performance point. I guess the same with this one. And everything else. I would have to go with really expensive upgrades to bring it to 700. So I will keep it at 668, and we'll see how it works. So let's go back to the Road X. Road X. Road Root. Because it depends if you're using a British or American English. I think it would be route X in American, route X in English, British. I mean, okay. Uh, car settings. Yeah, okay, those are the sports mediums. Uh, let's enter. Okay, we have two guys to listen to. Tepai, Tepai. Hello, my name is uh, Adam Tepai. I love Mustangs and, I love, and I've come all the way from Hungary to compete in this race. That's a long way, man. If only every race was for Mustangs. You don't stand a chance in today's race if your car doesn't have enough power. It's also crucial that you use the slipstreams of the cars in front of you to reduce wind resistance. Yeah, this. My dad and older brother are big Gran Turismo fans as well. We've always loved smashing each other's lab records. The experience I've gained from doing it's fundamental to how I race today. Cool. Uh, a quick uh, assistant setting, so it's manual. Traction control zero, ABS is weak. It's not like I'm going to need it in this race, but let's go. My understanding is this car is this puddles car wide as of a stretch view. Whoa, okay. I was looking 
and I was looking at the wheel. I was looking for the right hand of the driver uh, just to check how he changes the the gears. And I think it's actually manual. It's not puddles. So let's give it another try. Viper. I need to change the profile on my wheel. I've got a wrong Fanatec profile. I've got a Gran Turismo Sport profile at the moment of light. That car is bloody fast. Is there a seventh gear? There isn't. Okay, I have a right profile now. Should be better. Uh, how does my load cell look like? It's uh, it's good for ABS. Okay. Maybe actually. Uh, yeah, I can keep it the way it is. So I am still on the first lap because that's a single lap race. Uh, I'm doing almost 360. I'm third with the two front guys just here in front of me. Getting some slipstream, reaching almost 370. That's in kilometers per hour, of course, not miles. That's what, that's Corvette. Let's give that uh, Corvette some slipstream. If, if the guy there can keep up. But that Camaro is bloody fast. I'm still uh, around 40 performance points below the recommended 700 value. Yeah, but uh, this race goes as expected, boring. That, that track is great for testing if you want to test your uh, acceleration to, I don't know, a mile or something, or maybe if you want to do a top speed test, but for racing, I don't know. Maybe it would be good for racing if all the cars were at a similar level and you would have to use the slipstream to your advantage. But as it is at the moment, I need to adjust the camera a bit. Here we go. As it is, it's rather boring. I have three and a half seconds up in the just by pressing accelerator and doing nothing else. At least I can have my coffee now, without worrying about anything. So, we're doing 359 kilometers per hour, which uh, equals to 223 miles per hour. For our, our um, miles, friends. It's quite funny actually, because uh, I live in England. I don't know, I'm not English. And uh, kilometers per hour are more meaningful for me than miles per hour. My son, who was, uh, was born in UK, he's, uh, he's all about miles per hour. So for, for him, we're doing 222 miles per hour. For me, we're doing almost 360 kilometers per hour. I still think that kilometers per hour are better. Uh, they're more accurate and, you know, the numbers are higher. It's, it's better to do 360 than 220, right? How fast did you go? 220. Oh man, I was doing 360. That sounds better.
But anyway, this is the uh, second and the last corner. Let's negotiate it. And let's finish this hyper exciting race. To be honest, uh, driving the pickup or trucks, uh, the Toyota Tune Drive, I think it's called, and the Ford Raptor, so much more enjoyable on the Tona uh, Triable because the speeds were so much lower, and one had to use slipstream to even think about winning. So yeah, that was much much better experience. Okay, let me just adjust it. I don't like how it is. Here we go. Just a few things here around. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, so it was a win. Easy one at that. And I want to. I want a car which I really want to drive in the next races. Uh, which I'll have to tune. Which is the Corvette C7. I think this is one of my favorite cars ever. So let's switch that Corvette. And of course the yellow, yellow one is the one we want. I don't think it's the same yellow they use for the racing Corvettes though. Um, but anyway. I'm surprised to see Focus that high. I think it was fifth. Um, <clears throat> let's uh, switch the car in uh, in my garage. garage. So, our car collection increased by one American car. There we go, American cars. Uh, and that's the Corvette they're showing here as, uh, as red. Blue one is nice as well. I won't be reading that all for you. Too much text for a stream. But let's, uh, let's find it here. Here we go. Five, seven, six, out of the box. Not bad, not bad. Um, let's go to the tuning shop and let's uh, add it some more power and let's reduce some weight. Let's start with the weight. It's uh, it's 1500 kilograms car, so let's put it to, to less than that. Ah, I hate that mistake of uh, clicking out of this menu. I have to remember not to... Uh, stage 2. That we're going to two one two four five. The car already became much much lighter. Uh, let's do stage three as well. Those those are the the most affordable one. We already at six hundred and two performance point with this upgrade, and we're going down from fifteen hundred to eleven seventy. This is quite a difference. Uh, okay, now let's have a look extreme. No, I don't want extreme. Let's have a look here. Uh, we could go for the racing tires here, but I think this is too much for a road car. So let's go sports car, uh, sports tires. Oh, that's there. So sports tires are here. That car already has a sports hearts. Mm, we could keep that, or we could go mediums, which is let's get all of them, and then we'll decide what I'll decide what to use. Right? Those are cheap. So okay, here we have the tires. Back to racing and let's get good brakes for the car. Here we go. <clears throat> so I'm not going. Oh, I cannot even go with the uh, stage four. Um, I can go with the racing clutch and flywheel. Uh, I could go with the fully customizable suspension, but I won't. That's super cheap. Let's get it. I have that brake pads definitely. Racing exhaust manifold, yes, please. That's another few points. Uh, racing filter, we are at 650. Racing intercooler, that doesn't improve anything, but let's get it anyway. Uh, let's try to avoid anything above 10,000 at that stage. 
reduce the cost of the upgrade. Uh, customizable LSD. I don't think I need it at that stage. Already got better. Uh, suspension, definitely. The sport suspension should be enough. 657 already. That's pretty expensive. We could get that. That's just 7,500. We are at 660 almost. Okay, that's cheap as well. Anything here we would like to get? I think we would be good with the transmission. I get the ballast just in case I want to use it. And the same the power restrictors, they cheap and much close ratio transmissions, high and low. Hmm. I could get this one. I should work fine. I think a little better. Yes. Uh, no point, no point, no point. Maybe here. Yeah, let's go with this. With this. Do the bore up. Uh, 675, that's very close to 700 where we want to be. We'll just spend quite a lot of money. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think anything here is an upgrade for us. Everything here is actually downgrade at that stage. So, uh, I think that car is ready. 675, I will load 700. Ah, uh, there is one more thing I want to do. Apology. I need to go back. And the thing I want to do is related to GT Auto, to car customization. And what change? Uh, let me just have a. No, I want the original wheels, I want the original paint color, custom parts. That. Those two actually don't look too bad. They don't, they don't, they are not, you know, ugly. Uh, actually looks quite nice with those. They're very subtle. Uh, yeah, differential, uh, diffuser would be nice. And the wing. Oh no, please no. <laughs> uh, those wings are... There's the wing, the original wing, which is just subtle, nice, not too vulgar. Uh, sometimes those parts can be very, very vulgar. Racing items, what do we have here? Bonnet pin, I don't know why we would need that. Roll cage, no. Toe hook, no. Other, number plate. Light bulb, what is this? Okay. Really, I can buy things like that in that game? Does it actually give more lights during the evening races? Maybe, I want this one. I guess it's the strongest one. Caliper color, so... I'm curious how would yellow look like, the yellow car? I mean, red one is such a... common one, right? And that yellow, I think, looks quite nice with the yellow car. Cool, okay. I think now the car is ready, so let's use it. Really surprised that application of the parts takes so long. Uh, like I don't think I have to change anything because everything is in excellent condition. But you know what? White body. Is there something like that? How does it look like? I'm trying to see the difference. Oh, okay, there's a comparison. That's quite nice. Uh, yeah, but I want to spend 25,000 on that at the moment. Let's just wash that car. And uh, have a sip of coffee while they're doing that. Oh, sparkling new. Lovely. Okay, let's race it. <laughs> I'm curious if there are people who actually wash their cars after every single race. Let's do the one where we don't win a car because we already have it, just to clear it. Um, which is this one. Uh, here we go. So it lights up here in yellow, though, yeah, the reward is already in my possession. 
So this car has all modern technology and this 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 definitely is a puddles car. Free people to listen to, Fraga. I've come to the US with my father in order to race. My father is an engineer and used to be a racing driver. Naturally, he's the one who taught me the fundamentals of driving. I deeply respect him for that. Regalado. Hola, I'm Alonso Regalado. Nice to meet you. I'm from Peru in South America. It's a country that's probably most famous for the Nazca lines. Gran Turismo is what, Gran Turismo is what first got me into cars. But I'm sure that can be said of a lot of people. My favorite car is a Dodge Viper. So Liz, I drove a Viper at Laguna Seca in the AI6 license test. Taking the test is a good way of mastering the corkscrew corner. <laughs> that was all he had to say. Okay, a quick look at settings. Car assistance, we're having the sports. Uh, Let's try mediums, like, you know, between hard and soft, let's just uh, find a common ground. And let's have a look at assist, manual, traction control weak, uh, zero, everything off, that's weak, okay. It's good for the car, it's quite a modern car. deep into the corner 24 seconds that's what I have to the first one I'm not I'm not gaining the time quickly enough. It's too slow. seconds Gaining those positions, but I'm not decreasing the gap <clears throat> between me and the first one fast enough. Still 18 seconds. <clears throat> Such a mistake.
I may actually change the tires to racing for that amount of power and looking how fast the first guy is and I think the first is also driving the same Corvette Second still, 16 actually, more like 16. Viper in front, that will be on P2. Didn't break but quickly enough to that corkscrew corner. Carried a bit too much uh, speed. The entry managed to negotiate it but lost some time there for sure or didn't gain enough and I dropped the gap to 10 seconds but whoever is in P1 is still way too fast Viper is such a nice car. I still remember the Oreca teams from Le Mans winning that race. Such a shame that car doesn't exist anymore. I guess it wasn't feasible anymore. There wasn't a market for it or whatever. Eight seconds at the moment. Oh, I can see him. Seven seconds, around seven seconds at the finish line to the first one. The same car as mine. I am faster, but not fast enough. Um, I don't have enough grip in that car. It slides a lot with the with the power it has. Uh, finally, I have the suit and the helmet uh, fitting the the car. Um, Okay, I'm still 30, 30 performance points uh, below. Yeah, I already have that car. Um, I don't think I acquired it. Maybe I acquired it a second time or something. I don't know. Okay, let's go back to the tuning shop. I won't be able to win it with, uh, with the current setup of that car. Um, I'm still surprised. Uh, that car is manual, H-Potter. 
let's go to the tuner and let's get a better tire. So they will be racing tires. This is the next step. Hmm. I think actually no. Let's go back. So what I did, I attempted that race on the medium compound. So I still have a soft compound available, right? If I go car settings, yes, I can drop the softs. So we will be still on sports tires. I won't be going to racing tires, which I would have to buy, but I'll be trying soft compound, which should give me more grip. And I really need grip in that car. This is the only thing I need. I have to lift here when the elevation changes, or even though I'm on the fourth gear, that car would go spinning. That's how much power that Corvette has at that performance point level. On the sports tire, on the sports compound tires, even soft one, it's lacking grip in some situations. I, did, I didn't want to be squeezed here. I was parked here in the corner, nothing I could do. Whoa, man! What an asshole! AI can be really brutal in the game. Like, they can completely ignore the fact that you're somewhere next to them. Such a bad design. The AI algorithm has like zero awareness of the player car in some situations. I'm not saying it's all the time. But it can get really brutal. This is slap one and I didn't get a lot of time to the first one. I was slowly losing the control. Regained it just in time. Oh, even with me slowing there more, I still... My exit was still compromised by that Mustang. I should try to get this at in front with focus before the corkscrew. It was a braking with uh, going straight from 4th to 2nd. I didn't go through the 3rd gear this time when downshifting. So I missed the whole downshift. I mi sorry, I missed the whole, uh, whole gear here. Not a biggie. Maybe I was going from 3rd. I forgot now. Anyway, 15 seconds after two laps from 24, I think, or 23. That's not bad, especially that I'm still dealing with traffic. I was too far away to attempt an overtake here. And then I cannot do anything here, maybe now. I can squeeze here. His has enough space on the outside, so that was fair and square. Maybe I should stay on the third gear here. That second gear seems to be a bit too low. Well, it's not like I'm over revving the car, but still, I don't think it's that necessary with the amount of power we have in that car.
Oh, that's lap three, okay, and 11 seconds still. Even if I catch up with the first one, I still have to overtake that guy. If it's also a Corvette, it won't be easy. Nine seconds. There's some traffic at two laps, two laps to go with eight seconds actually. That's another Corvette here, Fraga in that Corvette. Last time he was in the first place in that Corvette. Something changed. What, we have even a faster car now in the first place? What the hell? If he's now four rather than first. I will stay on the third gear now, I, was, I got bumped. Push me to the left. Camaro SS on P2. Just five seconds to the first one. I'll try to get on the inside to the next corner. Here we go. I should keep it now. And this is P1 there in front, Solis. Not sure what he's driving. It's getting darker. I have my improved light, but I don't see any difference with light or without light. 2.6 seconds, the first one. That's Viper this time. Last time Viper was on P3. So there's definitely change in the on the grid. The situation uh, is dynamic. I need to catch up with him and overtake him. I would love to know what is his uh, car setup. Staying on the third gear, I think it's still a better option than the second. Here we go, I'm P1. Now I just need to deliver that results all the way to the finish line. There's uh, still quite a lot of power grip issues in that car, even on the softest of the sports compounds. And I still have to be very, very careful with that accelerator. All, or I'm risking spinning out at the exit of the slower corners, or even the third gear corners. That car can even spin on the fourth gear, which happened to me before. Especially here on the straight, there is an there is an elevation change, which uh, which can the balance issue and uh, lifting of the rear when the rear tires lose a bit of creep and then they start spinning on the fourth gear and the car goes so spinning and it's uh, it's game over but sport soft compound was enough to win that race with a three seconds advantage while on the medium compound also sports tires i was seven seconds behind the the first one, the difference was that the first one last time was uh, Fraga in that Corvette and uh, a P1 guy, which is, uh, sorry, P2 guys, which is Solis in the Viper uh, was third. So there was a bit of a change. Wasn't clean race, unfortunately. I think I bumped one of the guy or? I think I did, did go, I didn't go out of the truck, right? Maybe on the corkscrew, I don't remember. But anyway, uh, this is a win. No, no replace, just exit. And this, uh, let's go to the last race. I'm surprised this is already an hour long session.
There were some retries, so maybe that's the reason. Uh, okay, so the last uh, last session uh, is on the Daytona International Speedway. Uh, I'm curious if this is a road truck or if this is the this is the road truck. Good. I prefer the road truck rather than the the oval. So let's try it. American Clubman Cup 700 in Corvette C7. Four laps, just four laps. Uh, I'm staying on the soft compound. Uh, it feels like it's really needed in that car with the 796 performance point. Uh, that power is uh, is really really giving me a headache. Uh, let's uh, let's see what Solis and Kajal have to say. I'm going to compete in a tune-up Viper on this truck. The first corner is on banked section, which makes entering it quite tricky. If you turn the steering wheel too much, your car might enter a spin and you might not be able to prevent it. Try to minimize your steering as much as possible and be sure to brake only when moving in a straight line. And this is either... I'm curious how to pronounce his name. Uh, can be Kahal, can be Kajal, it really depends. What I love about Gran Turismo is how international it is. Take this race for example, there are drivers competing from all over the world. Sometimes I feel like they didn't want, didn't know what to what to ride there, so they just wrote whatever. It comes to a grip. It has no grip whatsoever. The sports tires are just, just like a smallest mistake, and you're flying. Horseshoe, first corner in the infield, and here we are, P11. 22 and a half seconds, I think there was, or 22 seconds to the first one. Sorry, mate, but I don't have much time here, just for laps. I didn't, I didn't really didn't want to hit him, but. I misjudge my braking pointer, unfortunately. Trying to learn that those braking points while I'm driving. Okay, I was very careful with the accelerator there. I was think I was breaking too early here. That's the there used to be a bus stop chicane. I changed its name to Le Mans chicane this year. This is due to the collaboration between the ACO and IMSA. So that chicane, the Daytona bus stop chicane changed its name to Le Mans chicane. And one of the Le Mans chicanes is changing the name or changed its name to Daytona chicane. This is because the DPI class very very wide. The DPI class is uh, also changing a little bit next year to the DP sorry the LMDH class. So the highest uh, two highest classes of uh, of the World Endurance Championship. One is LMH, Le Mans Hybrid. This is uh, unlimited class. It's, it will be attended by some of the manufacturers like uh, Toyota. The other class is uh, LMDH, Le Mans Daytona Hybrid. And we will see many more manufacturers in that class. Cadillac being one of them. I think Acura being the second. Uh, I think Porsche is also building a car in that class and many others uh, I'm not going to list all of them here I'm not sure which class uh, the Ferrari is building their car in I'm assuming the same as Toyota in LMH but the idea is that both classes should be racing together 
as the as the kind of combination of the two creating our highest racing class in World Endurance Championship. Of course, the LMDH will be also racing in IMSA, but LMH, I don't think they can race in IMSA. So I don't think we'll see Toyota in IMSA. We'll see Porsche. We'll see BMW. Oh yeah, BMW is one of those uh, LMDHs. The 2023 looks really promising for the real life racing fans, and especially IMSA. Such a great series. I'm really struggling with braking here in that car. I think I would have started braking way, way earlier. Sports tire don't don't provide me enough grip. My power to weight ratio is huge in that Corvette at the moment, and uh, and the sports tire, and I do not match that. Even the soft compound, I'm very, very careful with accelerator every single corner. But even here on the bands of the oval, I'm, I have to be very, very careful. I can see the first one, and that's Corvette as well. Fraga in the C6, uh, sorry, C7. The same as mine, just different color. If I won't mess up the braking to the T1, I should be a win just because of the difference of power. The AI cars are definitely tuned in a different way. I think they went into better tires, the racing one. So this time I was braking way too earlier. I mean, not too early, way earlier than the last time. And that actually worked much better. Whoa, he's right behind me. What a mistake. I don't know why I did that. Very careful with the accelerator, losing four and a half seconds. That didn't go according to plan. Barely keeping it in the truck, within the truck limits. We'll have to use that extra power I have to overtake him in on the on the oval part of the truck. That section suits my car. Fifth gear, not even six. Almost 300 kilometers per hour now. It is 300 kilometers per hour, and it's braking. Fourth, third gear. A little kick into the accelerator to stabilize it in braking, though I'd still need it in Gran Turismo. Fifth gear, closer to the bottom of the bank corner. 320. Oh, I'm glad that's done. Amazing car. Wow, those brakes are red. But really hard to control on the sports tire with the amount of power it has. Motormania trophy earned. What is this trophy? Stored 50 cars in the garage, really. 
Ah, okay. So they're already uh, counting the one I have just won. Yeah, that race was far, far from uh, clean, but that's okay. I can live without a clean race bonus. And this is the C4. I don't remember how C5 looks like. I think... Oh no, I know how C5 has the completely round uh, real lights, right? Or is this is it C6? I actually want to check now. Uh, let's see what they have in the in the Chevrolet store. Balloon. Uh, we, we'll go to the cafe in just a moment. First, we'll quickly go to Grand Central. See what there is in Chevrolet offer. There is C7 only, there is the Z, there's the C6. Okay, so that's what the six, C6 is. Oh, there is a C7 Z1. What a beast. Seven group three. Uh, I don't think there ever was C7 group uh, GT3 car. There was GTE car and that's, that's that, right? That is the GTE car. So it's definitely not GT3 car, but Gran Turismo doesn't have a GTE class. It has a group three class. Which is a combination of many classes, and that's where the realists go to trash. Uh, but anyway, so let's have a look at the used cars. So that's the C3, that's the C4. There is C5 here. I'm not even sure if the C5 is in Gran Turismo. Uh, maybe there is, maybe there isn't. I don't know. I'm not going to buy anything at the moment. I'm not to reach 2 million. So we have two things here to do. We can go to the cafe or we can go to the missions. So I guess I unlocked some new missions here. Uh, it doesn't matter. I definitely have new cars here. So let's quickly look at our collection just to clear this red mark. It will be all Corvettes in US, so all the way down. So, uh, C4. That's the Corvette from the 18 TV series, right? Where's the, ah, the other one with the hat? So that's the C3 here. Cool. I'll use the tickets later. Let's go back to the cafe and let's finish the book. Uh, I think it was 28. Of course. Collection complete. Congratulations, you've got all three cars. This completes your Chevrolet collection. Once you've collected your rewards, I've got some stories to tell you about these cars. Four star roulette ticket, that's another one. So we've got five at the moment. Let's listen to Luca first. I really want to listen about those uh, Corvettes. Chevrolet's Corvette and Camaro are widely considered to be among the most quintessential American sports cars. The Chevrolet brand was established in 1911 and named for one of its founders, Louis Chevrolet. The first car the company produced was the Classic 6, a large vehicle with a straight six engine. Their most famous model, however, is probably the two-seater Corvette sports car. The first generation Chev Corvette was unveiled in 1953. Wow. The new Corvettes are still being produced today, something the cars place as an icon of American motoring. It definitely does. Seven. Uh, get a wide body American car. Okay. Let's. I still want to listen about the Corvette. I want to see what Chris has to say about it. Here we have a 7th generation Corvette, this, or C7 for short. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the C7 debuted in 2013 as at the Detroit Auto Show. And seeing as how the original Corvette was born in 1953, 
the timing of its release dovetailed nicely with the car's 60th anniversary. Even in its basic package, the C7 boasted a powerful racing car engine. You won't find any European sports car with so much literal bang for your buck. That's true. I think this is like what 67 grand in here in UK for the for the C8 now. If you ask me, I would say it's a real deal for a sports car. It definitely is. Ed Wilburn. Hi there. I think it's my first time seeing you here. Are you the driver of the C7 Corvette? Wait, you were the design chief at GM for all those years? Correct. The name's Ed Wilburn. Burn, Wilburn, Burn. Nice to meet you, but please just call me Ed. It's truly an honor to meet you, Ed. As the Vice President of GM Global Design, Ed helped to create some of the world's fam most famous cars. The C7 Corvette was inspired by the rich history of Stingray designs. That said, it expressed more athleticism in its execution of those designs. The entire body is like that of a Stingray fish, with its undulating surfaces instantly recognizable slope and piercing front end. Bolt hood is shrink wrapped around a powerful V8 and its many air intakes and vents manage the flow of air throughout its incredibly sleek design. Thank you for that insightful piece of history. Don't mention it, I would love to talk to you again sometime. Well, until then. <clears throat> Great. It was good to hear about it, Corvette. Let's see what's the, what there is in another menu book. Oh, that's the number 28. Oh, yeah. Get a wide body American car. So, head to GT Auto and visit car maintenance and service. I think they want to spend me some, some credits. For this menu, I would like to try your hands at modding an American car to widen its body. You've got the Pan American Championship up ahead, so this is a great chance to get your car in shape. The first thing you'll need to you'll need is a suitable American car, such as Ford or a Chevrolet. Once you've got one, take it to GT Auto and visit car maintenance and servicing in order to apply the wide body mood. Come back to the cafe when it's done, I'll be waiting for you. Cool. Well, what better car to do it for than this Corvette, I mean? already check it uh, at the beginning so let's do it right now I think here I think it's racing items or is it somewhere else is it in no, I'm pretty sure it's car customization right Maybe it's not. Maybe I'm in the wrong place. Apology. Maybe it's in the car maintenance and services. For some reason it is. Okay. White body, 25 grand. We can do a review. Yeah. It, it, it is a bit wider and it looks cool. So let's install that thing. <laughs> it's so funny. Okay. We've got another uh, achievement. I'm going to quick quick look what uh, the achievement is. Okay, it was literally to to widen the body. Uh, looks amazing. Such a beautiful car. So that book was really quick. Easy to acquire. But the application of the spark sticks so long. I found that game uh, should be. Should be optimized for ps5 uh, let's go to cafe to complete that book and let's move to book 29 congratulations you've definitely earned your reward what's the reward now i think this is probably a matter of taste but i just love it when cards bodies are widened so the wheels are offset on the outside you can change your wheels at gt auto as it happens go ahead and give it a try if you're interested no, I'm not. okay i got interlagos and access to book 29 pan american championship 
So, menu book number 29, Championship, Pan American Championship. Let's uh, see what we have to do. Now that you've collected cards made by Ford and Chevrolet, the next step is to tackle the Pan American Championship. You will race on the trucks in the US as well as on Brazil's legendary Interlagos circuit. Aim to finish in the top three and come back here once you've managed it. All the best out there. Thank you. Mustang. Focus looks funny here. That brings up focus to such a beautiful cars racing here. Viper. Ford GT. I wish there was the, the new GT. That's Daytona. A really cool presentation. I think the best so far. I'm pretty sure that uh, Camaro touched the band there, the wall. Good music as well. So American. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm definitely going to use the same car. What's the recommended PP here? The championship recommended PP is 700. So this time I'm going to make a small change. Let's go to the tuning shop. And let's get racing tires. Um, mediums will bring me to 717, softs to 727, hard would give me 707. So let's go with mediums. Okay, perfect. But we will adjust the power a little bit should give us even more grip, uh, a bit less power and better tires. So, championship, let's enter in our Corvette. We are starting with a really boring racetrack. The Blue Moon, Blue Moon Bay. Apology. So, uh, car settings, uh, racing mediums, detailed settings, and the first thing we're going to do, we're going to... I think it's here, right? No, those are tires. Uh, ballast and ballast positioning plus power restriction. So let's restrict the power. Let's measure it. Cannot measure it yet? Well, I think that's... What do we have starting? 565. Let's bring it to 521 and let's measure. Where are we now? 709. Still too much. 79. Okay. We can bring it a bit higher. 700. Here we go. That's just below 700. That's what we want. We are now at what? At 463 brake horsepower. Uh, Great, so that's the car we will be using with that configuration. Let's see what Fraga has to say. The white body on your car is pretty sweet, it is, I know. I raced my green Corvette in Las Vegas during the 2018 Gran Turismo World Tour. I wonder if anybody remembers it, no I don't. In races on oval trucks, small differences when it comes to cornering have a significant impact. The first corner is practically important particularly important. Make sure your car doesn't start sliding. Well, hopefully this racing tower, uh, tires will assure that. Regalado. Aside from cars, I also like aeroplanes. In fact, I even have my own private pilot license. Pretty cool, huh? It actually is pretty cool. Wilk. Or Wilk? Maybe Wilk. Uh, like Polish Wilk Wolf, right? Whenever my family wanted to watch their favorite show, I would play my PlayStation into a portable TV and keep playing. The small screen made it tough to drive, but the experience was no less fun. 
I'm sure it was. Uh, okay, let's start. Presently was going faster than I thought here in that corner. Caught up with him easily. Okay, 12, 14 and a half seconds. Camaro. P11 Fifth gear to 70 12 and a half seconds, 5 laps to go A slipstream Trying to catch up with this uh, the bunch here Fast in the corner, wow, amazing. Okay, that was really good. Went on the outside of all of them. Let's get some slipstream from that Mustang. Hopefully we can catch him up before the corner. Here we go. Seven seconds to the first one. It's sliding here in the GT. Mustang GT, here we go. P5, four guys in front, five seconds, three laps. Four GT is the next one. Quite wide there. Rodriguez in his fourth. I can see Dodge Viper there. I think on P3. At Solis, definitely Viper. I'm not sure what port Eli is driving. Another Viper, I think. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow, okay. That port surprised the hell out of me now. I'm going really wide here. But it's okay, I have a good exit out of the corner. And I'm chasing the Corvette if you want. Fraga. With two laps to go. There won't be any mistakes, there should be now an easy win. Here we go. The green Corvette is behind us. The fast left hander here on the oval. I reduce the speed a little bit just to keep the car stable. Fourth gear. Started sliding. Such a dangerous moment. Final lap. Just one second advantage. That was some big airplane there. Above us, 1.5 seconds. Two more corners. Let's reduce the speed a little bit here. To stabilize that car. And then the final corner, 4th gear, 
easy if the accelerator of exit around two seconds advantage at the finish line. Here we go, a win. It wasn't easy, it took me a few attempts. Uh, it was really easy to destabilize the car on those uh, past uh, corners of that oval, tri-oval. A Viper came second, interesting. So I'm assuming that Fraga was third. I uh, haven't seen that. He was. Okay, cool. At least it's a win. Two more races to do. I think it's a free race championship. Let's skip that and let's move to the next race. Pan American Championship Race 2. And this time our Daytona. Five laps this time. Uh, it was four laps on the previous Daytona race in that car. Breaking to the P1. Uh, T1 is not easy. Okay, I'm starting last uh, again. That's my guess. Let's listen to Tapai and Kajal or Kahal. The Mustang is an iconic Ford sports car with a whole lot of history. I hope I can carry on, on racing in one. The banked corners here at Daytona are really something. The steepest of them is at a 31 degree angle. Okay. Let's listen to Kaha, Kajal, I'm really sorry for mispronouncing the name, as an Argentine native of Buenos Aires. I'm, I'm drawn to countries where the people are warm and friendly. Why do I even have to know that? It's about racing. Stupid comments sometimes in that game. On the third gear, crazy, crazy. Just enough space, let's see if I can uh, probably slow down here a little bit. When I'm watching the IMSA racing, they're not 24 hours. Really amazing event. They always live there in the racing cars and this is just a sports car, so... I would expect it to require the same approach. Surprises me that those racing tires do not provide enough grip. Twenty seconds now, that's huge. Okay, that's one of the guys who was uh, who, who had something to say before the race. Galada, I think, was there as well. I don't know, I don't remember. But anyway, they're behind me now. P7 with 15 seconds. Bloody hell, I went white here. I need to start breaking earlier next time. Breaking with right uh, right foot or right leg actually has some disadvantages. And my braking is always worse comparing to my left leg braking. But I need that left leg for the clutch to change the gears.
nine seconds. Okay, that time is going, the gap is going down really quickly. Solis in his Viper in P2, and Frog in P1 in the Corvette. I was much better with the braking this time. Gear, I'll never use the 6-1. I'm assuming there is 6-1, right? No, uh, definitely there is. Okay, let's drive away and finish this race. Uh, that's lap 3 out of 5. It's almost finished. We'll be on lap 4 in a moment, just 2 laps to go, there's already 6 seconds uh, gap to the second. There was a big twitch there at the entrance to the T1, well, just before I started braking. Glad I kept that car on the truck. We are in the infield again. And that car slides like hell. Don't know why it has racing tires. It doesn't have that much power. I reduce it using the restrictor to bring it to 700 performance point. But it still is such a piece to drive. One has to be really, really careful with the accelerator. Fifth gear. Le Mans chicane. I already said it in my previous video, uh, my previous race on the track, but this is not a bus stop chicane anymore. It used to, it used to be called bus stop chicane. Now it's a Le Mans chicane. It was changed this year due to the collaboration with the INSA and ACO. One of the uh, chicanes at the Le Mans race track is now called Daytona chicane. A bit of factual information there for you, if anyone is interested. Still can't believe this car has a H pattern. A 
I thought there would be puddles in a Corvette. But the driver hands animation suggests it's an H pattern. Maybe it's actually sequential. A stick, sequential stick or something. Anyway, it's too late now. Comparing that race to the previous one from the same championship, such a difference. The other one I was a bit struggling, it was the Blue Moon Trioval. This one is 20 seconds advantage. Thompson sliding again. Fifth gear and a straight and a bit of the corner bunt to the finish line. And here we go, the checkered flag done and dusted. I'm going to quickly check what kind of gearbox this car has. Robert C7 uh, gearbox paddles or H butter. Let's see what Google says. Ah, so they asking here on the Corvette forum why it has a shifter and puddles. So actually I can use whatever I want. Ah, so okay, so the puddles on manual shift cars aren't for shifting, they're the on-off switches for the standard ref matching feature. Okay, so this car actually has a, a normal traditional H pattern. And it's very interesting. Cool. I know what I wanted to know. Uh, there was another race, another win, another 12 points, and the final race of that championship. It's Interlagos, I believe. So we're going from America, from North of America to South America to Brazil. And here we go, Interlagos. Five laps, same as the other two. No, sorry, Blue Moon was six. So the same as uh, Daytona. Though this one is, I think, much shorter race track than Daytona. Uh, we have two people, two talking heads here. Let's listen to them. Or well, let's listen to me reading what they have to say. Hola, my name is Fabian Portilla. I'm from Chile, just like Nicolas Rubilar and Nico and I are and I are good friends. Okay. The first time I said I laid eyes on this Viper was the Chile Auto Show in Santiago, the capital. The moment I saw it, I knew that would never love anything more than, the, than cars. I'll be racing in a blue Viper today. Cool. And Rodriguez, uh, nice to meet you. I'm Manuel Rodriguez from Spain. One of my top three ideal cars is the Ford GT40. I'll be driving today. I hope I'll be able to race in the other two someday as well. Cool. I hope you will be able to race them. Uh, for now, let me race in my bed. Sounds amazing.
be careful with the accelerator. Just enough space here, our gap was big enough, okay, but I had to lift the accelerator a little bit. started to slide, I need to correct, that caused quite a big twitch, so that's sliding again, but stabilized it at the end of the day. Sometimes when I am um, kind of done with braking and I already downshift to the gear I need and then I switch my legs and I start helping myself with a left foot to stabilize the car in the corner but it's not always possible and sometimes I need to have that left foot on the clutch all the time. That was close. Viper is beautiful. <laughs> it bumped into me. Like AI doesn't know what too wide means in a corner. It just bump into me every single time. sliding again. So easy to do that in that car. Even though the reduced power of 520 horsepower or something like that, if I break horsepower, if I remember correctly, or maybe I'm actually below 500 now. The performance adjustments. It still likes to slide a lot. line here, at least that's what I think. The 
that's lap four out of uh, five. And I just jump to the P1. Now it's time to pull some gap to the P2. So it's almost 6 seconds now and this is going to be our final lap. What a beast! That would be on the last corner of the race. <laughs> if I spun here, it might have been uh, the end of the race. I knew I had uh, 10 seconds advantage, but still. It really depends how bad that spin would be. Okay, that was uh, American Championship in a true American muscle car. Corvette Stingray C7. Uh, three wins out of three races and funny enough the tri oval, the blue moon, the first one was the hardest. Um, finally a clean race bonus. Good, some good cash there. Well maybe not great but still. Okay so I have a chance for a Porsche this time. Uh, any, any one of these three will do. Uh, yeah, let's go with the first one. Nice, uh, 997, the newest one. Uh, and the GT3, they all GT3, no, there were two GT3 versions and the one RS Cup, yeah, I'm happy with the one I got. But all three are beautiful. Porsche is Porsche. Uh, timeless design. Cool, let's go and uh, complete that menu book in the cafe. That's what they're going to send me now anyway. And then I'm going to open the excellent work. You won the Pan American Championship. I've also got your reward ready for you. Go and grab it. And that's another four star roulette. I think I have a six now. Uh, and the menu book number 30, upgrade your Porsche is now uh, ready. Uh, Let's do it, it'll be a quick one, right? Uh, what do they want me to do? So, you've got your hands on a Porsche. That's great. I was thinking of having you complete, compete in the Porsche Cup. Sounds good. 
cars with a PP of up to 650 are allowed to enter, so you will find it pretty tough going in a normal port. As such, I suggest you head over to the tuning shop and upgrade your car so it's PP 600 or more. Don't forget though that your PP can't exit 650 or you won't be allowed to enter. Okay, if your Porsche does have a PP over 650, try fitting tuning parts that will decrease it or adjust the settings a little. For example, using a power restrictor will limit your engine output and lower your PP. You could also lower your tire grade or add weight with ballast. It's up to you. For this menu, I would like you to prepare a Porsche with a PP of 650 or less for the upcoming race. When you're set, right on the on back to the cafe, I'll be waiting for you. A lot of talking just to tell you that you need to upgrade your Porsche to 650. First of all, I want to adjust that uh, Corvette. I can do it actually in the garage while I'll be changing the car. So let's head to the garage. Uh, let's go to car settings and let's Res remove the restrictor, the power restriction. Here we go. Back to where it should be. Uh, now let's change the car to the Porsche. Go. And let's have a look. No, let's go to the tuning shop first. Uh, what is this car? 582, so it's very close to 650. What tires do I have of it? Sports Heart. Uh, Let's get the sports soft as well, just in case. Wide um, reduction, always a thing, a good thing to get. Uh, good brakes. Three already, and let's get the racing brake pads. That's six foot three still. Um, let's get the suspension. That's six for one. Another weight reduction. By three, that's too much. So I'll have to restrict the power probably a little bit. But yeah, we're there. That should be enough. So let's get back to the cafe. Ah, uh, no, I probably have to reduce it a little bit, right? I see you've got your hands on a Porsche with over 600 pp. Be aware that it's been increased over 650 and won't be eligible to enter the Porsche Cup. If that happens, you can reduce its pp by fitting certain tuning parts such as a power restrictor. So, are you all set? The Porsche Cup awaits. Here we go. We, I won't be doing that. Not now, at least. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to prepare the Porsche fully by putting the restriction. Oh, uh, I didn't buy the restrictor, did I? Never find that thing. That's ballast. Power restrictor. Here we go. Storage. And car settings. And here we can quickly adjust stuff. So we have 428 horsepower and 100 and 1157 kilograms of weight. Let's reduce the power a little bit. That is okay. That's enough. Six four nine, uh, four hundred fifty horsepower. Okay. And let's go to car collection. Let's clear that mark. It will be in German monitors. That Porsche. No, that should clear it. And let's open some tickets. Let's start with the crappiest one. So the two stars roulette tickets. That's the first one. I'm going to remind everyone that I've never got anything better than the lowest crappiest reward. There we go. That trend continues. Wow, the whole five tons of credits. Okay, another one. I think this pile is 10,000 credits, so that's what I'm going to get. Here we go.
part one. And the trend continues. I'm curious why they have all the other rewards if they don't want to really give it to player. I really guess it comes from the greed of wanting you to spend real uh, money to buy credits. I really didn't know that Polyphony Digital is uh, that greedy, but it seems like they are since they introduced those uh, microtransactions. Oh wow, so here I will get a car after all, even if it's the crappiest car ever. Actually, you know, Charger Hellcat is a nice car, so I won't be complaining here. That was actually pretty nice, pretty sweet reward, 600p car. So, not sure if it was the worst reward, that's really hard to say here, but yeah, thank you very much. Let's see what I can get here. Another four star. Uh, the, reward, the rewards are uh, far from great, and that definitely looks like the crappiest reward, which in this case will be 30,000. Cool, okay, so we're done with those tickets and everything. And that will be all for today. It was another already two and a half hour long session, so I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you, I'll see you next time. Have a great uh, Sunday.